And the final step we're going to do is we're going to take our image that we just loaded and we're going to write it back to disk as new image.jpg. So notice that I hard coded this file name. You could easily add in a separate command line argument to handle writing the image back out to disk as a separate file name. And in fact, that's something I recommend you do so you can start to build up your understanding of command line arguments. So now the script is reviewed. Let's go up here. We'll copy and paste the usage, pop open to our terminal and execute the script. Let's see what we got. Our width is 720 pixels, implying that there's 720 columns across here. The height is 764 pixels, implying that we have 764 rows going up and down. And we have three channels since this is an RGB image. Now notice the title here. Notice that how it says image. That's what this argument is here, right, right here to cv2.im show. This window is going to keep displaying until I click on it and press any key on my keyboard, which will advance execution of the script and then write the image back out to disk. So I'm going to press a key on my keyboard. We're going to move on from this call. We're going to write the image back out to disk and then our script will finish executing. So I want to show you two things. First, I want to delete this image from disk so you can see that when we run it for this script, it's going to write this image back out to disk as a JPEG file. And the other thing I want to do is show you how to change the window. So if I want to change the title of the window from image to pi image search, just update that. So now I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to run the script again, but this time I'm going to supply the path to this, this image here, jurassicpark.png. So when I execute this, we're going to see that our image has a width of 577 pixels, number of columns, a height of 433 pixels, number of rows, and this is a three channel RGB image. Notice the title up here has been changed from image to pi image search. And when I press a key on my keyboard and advance execution of the script, we're going to have new image.jpg, which is the same image that we loaded, but as a .jpg file. So your homework from this is to run the code. Because as you go through these lessons and as you're learning computer vision and image processing, it's not enough to simply passively watch a video or read an article. You need to get your hands dirty with the implementation. And this is something you'll hear me say all the time. So you know what, it's gonna be redundant because it's an incredibly important point. Don't be passive, be an active learner. Run the code in the dot zip provided with you. Run the code in the Jupyter Notebook. Run the code and learn from it. Supply your own images. And two things I want you to do here. One is go download some other image off the internet and then supply it as a command line argument to the script. That'll give you good experience with command line arguments. The other thing that I want you to do is add a new command line argument, an output command line argument. And I'll give you a hint. It should look something along like this. Let's see, the path to output image. So using this code, how do you think you would update this line to accept an output path. I'm gonna leave that as an exercise to you, the reader, to implement. Gain some experience using command line arguments. Read the argparse tutorial I mentioned earlier in this guide. Get that practice, and then I will see you in the next video when we start learning how to access and manipulate individual pixel values. I'll see you then.